So a lot of us still game on our computers, on our PCs, and when we do that, we want nice, fast internet with very little lag. We also want very little latency when we're watching movies and when we're browsing the internet. So we know the basics. We know we've got to close down all the other programs, giving our computers to focus on one application, giving us the best internet experience possible. But in reality, we don't really know how much data our computer is sending and receiving in the background whilst we're trying to play our games or whilst we're trying to do whatever we're doing online. If you want to take back control of your data, of your connectivity, get the best possible internet from your Windows machine, I have a solution for you. Let's do this. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Tech Guy. My name's Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button below and let's get on to today's show. So we know the basics, we know what we need to do, close down all the other applications, focus our entire attention on the browser that we're using or the game that we happen to be playing. We've also optimized our Wi-Fi and we've optimized our router settings. Links will be up here if you want to see how to do that. But it, sometimes it feels like there's still no control. There's still, your computer does what it wants, it sends and receives as much data as it needs to, and there's still other programs, even though they're closed, they're still sucking away some of that bandwidth. I want to understand what my computer is doing at all times so I can control it. I can get the maximum bandwidth for the fastest internet, the fastest connectivity possible, because I'm in control, not Windows 10. So let's jump into it. I'm going to show you a program that does this. It's a little bit technical, but it's so easy to use. Anybody can do it. Let's get started. Right, let's begin with my Windows 10. I'm right now going Alt and Tab to show you there's nothing else open except for the screen recording app. Let's fire up the app. So this is Glasswire and it looks a bit intimidating, but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the whole thing. So here is your timeline. What's happening right now? What data is leaving my computer? right now and i've got a little bar at the bottom i can play with the timeline and if i click on anywhere on it it could actually stop right top left hand corner i'm here i can select all or just the apps or i can see the traffic so if i select the apps it's going to tell me what app is currently running and how much data it's currently sending and receiving and i can break it down into traffic which is essentially is the protocol what kind of traffic is sending and what kind of traffic is receiving so this is going on constantly, even though, as you saw, the only thing I had open was the screen recording app. And let's double check that. Yeah, see, it's still the screen recording app. Now, click anywhere on the timeline itself. At the bottom, it will tell you how much data has been uploaded, how much data has been downloaded, what's the service, and what are the hosts? Where is it going to or coming from? And again, everything applies to any way that you click on this little timeline. You can get that kind of information. So already pretty cool and of course everything keeps going just because I paused it to look at something doesn't mean it stops collecting information. Once you unpause it, let me do this. Let me move this to the top right hand side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Chrome. Let's make sure this thing is working and let's go to the blog, thetechyguy.com, minimize that and now I should be able to see Chrome popping up as an app and yep, there it is. Let's go to YouTube, send some more data. So we know this Chrome is essentially talking to the internet, sending information, receiving information, and it immediately reflects right here. And again, there it is. I can click on it and it will tell me where the traffic is going and where is it coming from. Scary stuff, because sometimes you just don't recognize any of those countries, location, IP addresses. All right, what else can we do? Well, let's fire off something like Firefox, something I haven't touched for quite a while. There it is. No, I don't want it to be my default browser. Let's go to a website. Oh, there we go. It's already appeared on the right hand side. If it appeared, it means it's already sending and receiving information. So I haven't even gone anywhere. All I did was just simply open it. Now that I've opened it to a website, now of course you expect it to send and receive data. What you'll soon find out is how much stuff actually happens without your knowledge. So for example, when I just launched the Firefox, it was already starting to communicate with these servers in the world. Well, why? I didn't even go anywhere. All right, let's close down that. Let's open up Mail. Okay, move that away. It's fine. Right, you can clearly see, there we go. There's Outlook right there. And we expect this to send and receive information. So again, 
This is exactly what we're looking, what we know is supposed to happen. So that's perfectly fine. Here we get a little bit weird. So I've opened up Excel and look at this. Excel immediately pops up, which means it's already communicating. Well, I haven't even done anything yet, but I've already got data that's been sent. The nice thing is you can click on it and you can get all this information. What is it talking to? Probably an update, but I don't know what this is. I don't know what these addresses are. So to me, it's a bit scary that so much information is leaving and coming back that we actually don't know about. Right, let's close down this and let's do the same with Word. And you'll see Word once again starts to communicate with the world. The one thing I will say in Word, I do have the Grammarly plugin installed. So I'm assuming some of it is what this is, where it's sending information to Grammarly. Um, uh, but again, the rest of the stuff, I have no idea what this is. So what do we do next? Well, this is where it gets interesting. Let's maximize that and let's go into usage. So you can see under the usage essentially is how much data I've sent over a period of a day, a week or a month, or I can give it a custom range. Let's leave it as a day. And here I can see this is July 1st where I'm recording this, uh, but I can go back to previous day. And here you can see the total data that's been sent and received. And look at this, there is my backup. So my backup is my cloud backup that's eating up so much of my data and all this other stuff happens. And these are the websites that I go to. This is where it's getting its information. So this is basically what's going on. Now, the more of the stuff that you have going on, of course, the slower your internet speed is going to be when all these things are trying to fight for the same bandwidth. This is why this is important. This exposes all of this so you can understand when your machine is slow or your internet is slow, you can come into here and see what is eating up my data. At the top, things, which I like this. This is basically things which are connected to my Wi-Fi. I can give it a label, and but beyond that, nothing more that you can do with this, but you can get alerted when a new thing connects to your Wi-Fi. Okay, so now I know all the stuff is going on on my computer, what can I do about it? Well, this is where the firewall comes into play. Once you enable the firewall, and remember this needs to be using the Windows firewall, it cannot be using a third party like your antivirus, and I'm gonna show you how this works. So let's go to a website. So this is youtube.com, if I can spell that, great. And everything loads up fine. Now, let me show you what happens. When you go into your firewall, and now I can say, I wanna press this little button, this little thing looks like a flame, and now I have essentially blocked off Chrome from using the internet. Let me show you that that works. There we go. Your internet access is blocked. So I have told my computer that Chrome is not allowed to use the internet. Let's try another website. Same thing, right? Access is blocked. I am starting to regain control of my data. Unblock that. Let's go back into Chrome, refresh and Twitter should load. And there it is. Okay, so it's about taking back control. What else can you do with this firewall? Well, let me show you. Firstly, you can set up profiles. So this is my work profile, which means things are allowed to work. But let's just say I want to watch Netflix and I don't want to be disturbed because it's after hours. So I can create a new profile name. And then I can see what kind of systems do I want to have. I want to block everything by default. I want to use the current default. You know, this is just the information you can choose from. Click on confirm. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to that, to that other profile, to the Netflix profile. Great. Now, I don't want to be disturbed by anything. I want just to be able to stream and I don't want any notifications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select block all, but it doesn't immediately block everything. Look what happens. Bottom right hand side, this thing pops up and now you've got some options. What do you want to do? Do you want to click to block? Do you want to ask? Do you want to block all? Now, I like the option of being able to ask. And essentially what ask means, it's going to ask permission from you every time a new application starts to use the internet or wants to use the internet. So I leave that as that. Now look what happens. I go to Netflix doo -doo 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 -doo, and I'm waiting for it to load. And as soon as it does that, some hosts are trying to start using the internet. Do I want to allow it? I'm going to say allow it. There's Chrome. Do I want to allow it? And then here is something else. I don't know what this is. Bonjour service. Click on the three little dots. It will give you a little bit more explanation. I want to say, okay, I'm going to deny that. My antivirus, of course, I want to be continuously running. 
click allow, run Slack, or oh, I don't want any work stuff. There we go, now my internet is working. So let me close this little thing that popped up and let's go to Netflix. And you can see as more things are trying to starting to use the internet, I'm gonna start denying them because I have no reason for this to run. Let's fire up Netflix. You can see that that's working. There we go. Before we get copyrighted, I have to get out of that pretty quickly. And that is how we take control of the information. We're back to our firewall. I'm gonna change it back to work. And then those rules no longer apply. A new set of rules starts to apply. Right, let's check out the alerts. Essentially what alerts does, it says, hey, this is the kind of stuff that has actually changed on your network, on your computer, sorry, over the last X period of time. And I can go into it, I can see what is the app, what happened to it, did it change a version, did it change a name. In fact, if I go to my graph and I set it over three hours, there you can see the last three hours, look how much traffic has happened and some new events have happened. But if I click on it, I can start drilling it into it and understanding what's actually going on. So in this particular case, I know exactly what this is. I did an update of one of my programs. I'm very happy that this happened and that's fine. Peace of mind, I have control. And again, it's all about that. So something happened here, fine. There was an update here. I said office, heartbeat, okay, whatever. You can click on it and then you can in fact do a quick search online to see how legitimate this program is. In fact, let me show you that as well. So we found a program that we're not sure what it is. I don't know what this is. The first thing I can do is I can send it to query to be analyzed. This has got a built in, almost like a virus checker firewall thing. And then you enable that by clicking on the top, going into settings, going into the virus total. And here we go. And then once you opt into this, you've got to unlock. It's free, it's part of this package. And this is going to essentially protect my computer and understand the kind of applications and if I have anything that I want to send to them to check I can immediately do that right let's see something else okay so here's a program I don't know what it is I can now go I can see it's from Microsoft I can click on these three little dots next to it and then I click on search online and you'll see it will fire up Google with that with it basically whatever that service is and then I can get some more information and then I can make a decision whether this should be running on my computer or not I can I block it or not by the way, if you made a mistake and you've blocked something, you can always simply go back into the firewall and then unblock it. It's amazing how much information your computer actually does without your knowledge. It's time to take control. It's time to stop that. I want to control my bandwidth so I can get the best experience possible. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Give it two thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Let me know what else you want to see happening next. If you are new here, hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of these other cool videos down here and I'll see you over there.